All right, I'm gonna call our meeting to order. And do I have to see alternates? Yes, I have to see Correct. alternates. So I'm gonna see um, Jonathan Yisley to, yeah. And is Doug an alternate? No. No, okay. He's I'm in still getting used to everybody. He's a regular for right. Stephen Antonio's vacancy. That's right, you're Stephen's. Okay. And then just so you're aware, Ron, is supposed to be attending, so okay. he might show up. If late. he shows up in time, um, so I'll call to order. Roll call: Joanne Hogan, um, Doug McCowan, Sherry Landerman, here, and Jonathan Yisley. here. Um, we're going to hear our first application. Can Sherry read that in for us? Um, yes, application ZBA number 24-02 of Curtis Mooney and Manu Singh Mooney, applicant owner for variance to section 3.9 of the zone, Simsbury zoning regulations to construct an attached accessory dwelling unit within established property setbacks by reducing the side yard setback from plus or minus 40 feet to plus or minus 31.4 feet and reduce the rear yard setback from plus or minus 50 feet to 40 plus or minus 47 feet at 10 Cedar Glen Assessor's Map, E10, Block 147, Block 207. Simsbury, Connecticut, 06070, Zone R40, public hearing continued from March 27, 2024. Thank you. I'll note too that Ron Casa just arrived, so he could be in Sorry, I went to town. No <laughs> <laughs> I guess the same. Um, is there someone here to speak to this application? Yes, we are here. Yes, you are. Um, please state your name and address. My name is Sam Looney, 10 Cedar Glen, Road, West Simsbury, Connecticut, 06092. So you, when you were with us last time, we just determined that we wanted some more, maybe some uh, investigation into reducing either the size or the number and or the number mm -hmm. of size. So, how would you like to respond? Yep. So, I mean, we, uh, I think also the part of the um, request was to like confirm things that I had thought were the case with our designer. Mm -hmm. And ideally, have her here, but she was not able to come, so she's in another zoning meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so, in doing that, I think some of the original um, assumptions that I had had that I, my memory had certainly was correct. Like, some of the things that were d done were sort of like requirements. The, the goal was to not have any additional variance requests you know, needed, and then um, so we can, can go through some of the points that were documented in this letter um, to kind of indicate why that had to, whatever was there had to be there. But what we were able to do as she tried to kind of redo, redo some of the things was take off some of the um, variance requests on, on each end. Okay. Yeah, I read the letter. Did you guys all read the letter from me? Architect, I thought that was helpful. Yeah. Um, and how she explained what they were able to. So basically, the big thing is they were able to remove the door between the, the, the small door to the right of the garage that had been planned. So now that, yeah, right. So right in here. So yeah, they removed that right exactly. So you can see the door in the original. Yeah. And now it's moved over, so that bought you some space. Um, I also appreciated the explanation of the third garage and how the, because of the elevation changes, the, the access from the existing garage wouldn't be flat into the addition. So that answers a bit of the need for the, right, and for the, actually for that garage to be there because the existing garage wouldn't be, a, would be a step into the new addition, which could be an issue going forward. Um, and does anyone else have something specific to speak to that or to anything that they read in the letter from the, Architect, or to the changes in the size of things. Where's the letter? The letter is 
So the letter was part of the application. Under the thank you. It's at the bottom under the floor plans. It says a letter from architect near the bottom of the So they narrowed the garage and made it what they could to maintain accessibility around a park vehicle. You have to be able to get out of the car. Um, and the slope of the backyard per prohibits it being moved back. So that front yard setback, or the to is it the side yard or the front? Front yard setback. Side. It's a side yard setback and a rear yard setback. Side yard setback is was reduced a smidge. Um, so you were at 31.4, now you've gone to 32.3, so it's 0.9 feet less of, of an ask. That makes sense to people. Um, I would also know? like to note, just for the record, really quick, so the in the letter the architect submitted, um, the calculation that she did for the accessory dwelling unit, um, she didn't include the finished basement as part of the total that goes towards the bank that you can essentially draw from okay. for an ADU. So it's actually greater than that. It's kind of a moot point um, just because the applicant is now proposing around a 606 square foot ADU right. as opposed to 650 that was originally proposed. But the limit, just so you guys are aware, is 1,221 square feet. And so that's the maximum. total are they at? So right now they're only proposing oh, 606. Oh, I see. Okay. Strictly for the accessory dwelling unit portion of the addition. So they were well under that limit in the first submission and then since okay. the revisions have been made. But that now. doesn't include the downstairs, does it? So that includes, basically the way that's calculated is we take the living area off the property card. And so typically that will be broken out with the living area, but then it can also include in separate categories, finished basement space, um, and then there's some additional okay. categories that we would look at. And so the architect just didn't take in the finished okay. basement space. Okay, got it. So they're within there. Okay. Um, so the And if there's anything you'd like to see, just let me know. Can you please go back? Yeah. Right, so they reduced it almost a foot yeah. on the side and a half, half foot in on the rear. rear. hear anything from neighbors no public Never comment okay. was received for this application okay. that to me means that they are not objecting that's how I have to take that Doug anything yeah I don't have any questions and then so Allie is absent for this meeting but I believe she was the one that requested exterior photos of the right. home just to get a better idea so this is essentially the space yep. that the addition would be placed um, it does show the slope pretty clearly so you can see the side of the house yep. and then this is the backyard mm -hmm. yeah, the side and the backyard. Yep. and that's actually sloped right Okay. Yeah, it goes all the way into the water. And yeah, like you can well, see that slope kind of keeps going. It's a two-dimensional photograph. So yeah, it's hard to flat. Even from yeah. our house and our windows, it's, it's it looks like you have a flat backyard and you don't want to set it. And from the road, it's, it's like 10 feet slope. Yeah, you can't even see the backyard. Yeah, so this is a 
a good representation of that. Do you all have anything else you want to say? Because it's at some point we'll close the discussion and have our own discussion before we vote. So I want to make sure you guys feel comfortable. I mean, I just, I was just add that, um, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, um, my mother-in-law this past week was, um, was hospitalized um, in Maryland. She's on her way back today. But it highlights the issue in which um, she has a four-bedroom house in Cape Circle, which is a great neighborhood, great area, um, that is too big for her. And she um, needs to be around you know, family, so if something happens, she's older lady. Um, it opens up another house for another family to move into town, additional cars in town for as far as taxes. So um, there's that, that side of it. I know that's not part of this process, but if it does create another house and bring another family into town, which her, her car would be at our house, um, it will allow us to be able to um, tend to her, to, to you know, because um, there's no one else in Connecticut for our for, for family. So um, it'd be a big help. Um, it took us a while to get to this point to, to be able to, um, say you know, we're, we're willing to take on this, this responsibility of you know, housing our, our mother-in-law. Um, so it'd be very helpful. I think we've done it in a way that allows her to keep her own privacy, but to also allow us to be able to interact with her on a, on a regular basis to be sure that she's okay. Um, so we've tried to keep it as small as possible, um, just because you know, we the neighbors to make sure it fits into the area. Um, and then um, I just you know, like to add that to the, to the personal side of it to say, hey, this is something we're, we're trying to do um, for that purpose. And so um, hopefully this we've made enough adjustments to make sure this can go forward. Um, but yeah. Definitely yeah, and just also I think there was a question about like size, like could it be smaller in different ways just as far as the living unit goes. And, and I did confirm, like, we went through all of the different places, and it's sort of it is really taking into account that potential for a walk or a wheelchair. And so it's like, you know, just it's everything, even the bathroom, like, if you were able to turn around within the bathroom. So just everything was taken into account for that. And so she, we tried to try to bring in and have no variance requests for the back variance, but it would, it would prohibit movement in the other rooms, mm -hmm. um, adequate movement around the typical furniture that you need, like in the bedroom yeah. and things like that. So, so we could take one and she was like, okay, I think we can do that. We can talk about one, but we can make it smaller and still have that movement that's necessary. So that's why we can do that. motion to close discussion which means it's closed to the public we'll deliberate and then vote i would just get a second and uh yep second for that second thank you so moved so just so the hearing is closed so to us to discuss anything else we want to discuss then we'll start All right, I'm going to say that one thing i did notice in the letter from the architect is she stated that um, they didn't include in this floor plan any, you know, kind of elaborate things like walk in closets and things like that in order to keep the size of it compact. So that was appreciated that that detail was pointed out. Um, clearly, they went back and getting rid of that door, which may not have been your first choice, the first choice to have not have that door next to the garage is appreciated because it did bring things in. Um, I think they made concessions and certainly went back and did their best to minimize the setbacks. It is unusual to be asking for two variances. It's not a common thing we see, but um, I feel like they went back and minimized it as much as they could given the need to have accessibility from a garage into the house and that the existing garage wouldn't allow that into this new addition either. 
doors, so there has to be some way for them to get into the house. So, anyone else? I am still struggling with the two variances. Um, and I'm in houses all the time. I, I appreciate that they made some adjustments. They don't make a big difference. Um, I wish the regulations were clearer or more adapted to the ADU issue, because I think that's mm -hmm. an upcoming huge issue for my generation, and it's a huge issue mm -hmm. in all the surrounding towns. Um, but if I have to take it based on the regulations, I'm I'm just really I'm struggling with there being two variances. I think it sets a difficult precedence. I know the street. I know this lot, while it's sloped, is not in and of itself for an R40 lot, an unusable, difficult lot. You're trying to add an addition to a house that's including an extra garage, an additional living space, an additional space below. Um, I agree with the need, if you're gonna design something like this, to have the extra space to, I mean, I'm constantly working with people where we're trying to get that extra space for a wider door or swing for the, um, you know, for a wheelchair. I think all houses should take that into effect. I do think they could have locked a couple feet off the back and had plenty of space if I look at the sizes of assisted living units um, or some of the other units. So I, and I'm not ignoring at all the need for this type of thing. Um, I, I just, um, I just, when I look at the, what I'm supposed to use for criteria, I'm having, um, I'm just having to with it. Does anyone have a comment in regard to that? Well, I think they've shrunk it as much as they could. And uh, I'm okay with two variances. Uh, they're, not, they're not asking for a crazy amount of space. And there's plenty of law. I don't see a way that they could, short of eliminating the garage, they can't get rid of that side yard setback at all. I mean, they, there's still going to be side yard there. Right. Um, or the side yard variance, I should say. Um, I'm not. I mean, I'm even taking into account the fact that the building's on an angle to where the, the side and rear yard are, mm -hmm. so it's like triangles. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really taking that into consideration. Right, and it is, the angles are awkward. You know, so I'm thinking, okay, well, if, you know, if you didn't go back this far, then, you, you know, you maybe you didn't need that back triangle, or could you, You know, if the garage, if you utilized the garage space. Okay, so the entry going into this unit space is the same width as the garage space for the proposed addition. So I'm like, is there any way that if the garage was a foot or two shorter in that footprint that you could take a foot off the back or something so that we didn't need that triangle. I'm just, I'm just trying to think how I think to make it work. Is it a size, narrow size, bigger than narrow size? Yeah, that you mean front to back. Right. I mean, is it even an opportunity to reduce the size? I mean, a stand. Okay, so a standard garage is ten by twenty. That's small, but that's 
like your minimum 10 by 20. Like if you go and you rent a garage space, that was, that's what you have. But then you don't have much room to get out and move around. I see this all the time. Right. So, so I'm yeah. always looking at the placement of where the garage doors are and how much space is to the right and left to see how people can get out of the car, open the doors, how you could ramp if you had to yeah. in certain Especially things to get in. Exactly. So um, they, they do have an extra four feet, which is good because they don't have a huge... I mean, see how the opening into that second garage, if that wall space was shorter or more open, then if the if it was narrower, you'd have you know, you'd have space to swing around. But that doesn't help you can't reduce that much because you need that space to get into that how they have that kitchen and entry into the yeah, there has itself. to be a door into the kitchen. Exactly. Right? So I'm you know, so I'm looking at that and I'm you know that's what I'm thinking. There's no opportunity to reduce the garage size. Right. But I mean, that said, um, the way the bonus space and everything is set up, I have seen a ton of condominiums, units for other people that do not have even kitchens in regular housing. I see it all the time. This does have very good adequate space. It's a it's it's a really good plan. It's a good amount of space. It's the size of a one bedroom apartment in a lot of places. Um, so I'm trying to I'm really trying to factor everything in, but I'm also trying to look at what we're supposed to use as criteria in order to give a variance. And I'm always concerned with the precedence that you that you set when you give them. Well, you're dealing with each individual application, each application individually. Right. So, if we find that there are special conditions and circumstances with this piece, it, it's this piece. Okay. But does that mean so? Just help me with this. Does that mean that any applicant can choose to, for what they think is a good reason, to say, I want to put this on my land, and we're supposed to take that into consideration as we give? If their land reason. specifically right. has a condition that is preventing them from using it, as this one has the slope and the... Okay. And the so similar conditions are used, I think. Right. But you have you have a lot with particular restrictions based on zoning and you have a different use of sorts. It's still residential, but you're adding additional space. Couldn't I mean, do you, I don't Well, I think that the only way that to satisfy what you were saying right. would be to say that the backyard setback, the backyard, the rear yard setback going from 50 to 47.5, you want them to find two and a half feet so they don't need the rear yard setback. The question is then, is there two and a half feet in this floor plan? without getting rid of the garage, because I don't think getting rid of the garage is, or even changing the size of it is really the solution. No, I don't know either, but um, I'm thinking within that space, so it would have to the, can be the coming, plan be pulled forward? It would have to be, to well, and maybe the garage, but it's still, yeah, not really. Not really. So, because you have the wall. Yeah. Okay, so this is right. Is granting two variances is not a common thing. Well, it's just not a common thing. This picture doesn't look like that picture. What am I seeing different? Well, you have to look at the new floor plan, which is here. I have. I, I did look at it. Just this is the new one. If you want to look at it right here. Yeah. 
so the new floor plan, that's not the new one. Wait, yes it is. It doesn't have the door next to the garage. So you would somehow you have to bring the back of the building two and a half feet smaller. The space would have to come out of kitchen space and living space, most likely. percentage of the side yard variance is fairly substantial already and then we're granting a second variance Going from it from fifty feet to thirty two point three, and the backyard is going from forty to fifty to forty seven point five. So it's a total of about Ship to me seems clear that the slope of the property, the only place to even consider an addition is where they've put it. Mm -hmm. And the, the back of the property um, seems to put yourself against no one that's going to to see that two, two and a half foot variance. And that, that two and a half feet is not impacting the, the value of neighbors' properties. It's not uh, impacting safety in the community in any way. So, um, to me, it seems uh, reasonable from, from, from those perspectives. I agree with Jonathan. And the homeowner and, and architect have come down significantly on this side. Well, not even a foot. No. On the back, they came down not even a foot. On the side, they came down a lot, didn't they? Uh, they a about a foot oh, on, on the side, side yeah. half foot down. and a half on the back because they took the door out. Right, right, right. Okay, sorry. I can't read. I do think we should know the, the angle of the house on the property is part of the issue here. Um, if it were more straight, that the front corner would probably be quite as dramatic of an ask. Right, and that's why I was hoping that they'd be able to do something that then the triangle piece would be less. I, I appreciate what Jonathan said, and I appreciate that the neighbors have not no, been in just, touch at all, so I don't think anyone's objected to this. Not that that's always what we go by, but 
if we had an objection, it would be something to think about, and we don't. Well, okay, do we know, I think it's somewhere in here, but maybe it's easy for Joe yeah. to just pull it up. Okay, do we know the actual square footage of both triangles total? Of the, the, triangles. Of the triangles that are being the, the square footage of what the variance actually is. So you're essentially saying the square footage that of this piece of the and, 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 the, and, and the piece in the back. So I believe the architect I referenced. It is it in the letter? Yeah, I believe she referenced the actual square footage that's being reduced. So in the letter to the architect, it says the design submitted for your review asks for approximately 200 square foot of variance, 150 square feet on the front corner and 50 square feet off the rear yard. Okay, so. So she's saying that this is 50 square feet approximately and then this is 100 feet. Yeah, it's approximately 150 square feet. And she decreased it by 80 square feet, which is, Of course, if you take that, say, 200 square feet in your living space that you're trying to actually get is 600, that's like, a I mean, it's a third percentage-wise. Um, so I'm trying, oh, really, yeah, I, really am, I really am trying to balance this. I know, but the 600 isn't, most of the variance is the garage. Mm-hmm. can't move the whole thing back. No, no, we can't. Which wouldn't help anyway, because the backyard like back would grow more. Right. They would be bigger, probably, if they moved it back. So. It's, it's also slope significantly. Right, right, even if you could, it would yeah. not reduce the setback amount that we're asking for. So, well, and the back setback, as far as visually, is not, percentage-wise, that's not as big an ask and it doesn't nobody really sees it mm -hmm. the side yard is you know fair, fairly substantial percentage wise as an ask mm -hmm. so that so then having two of them is acreage of this lot. So the lot is just oh, under an acre. Yeah. Yeah, because the builders acres are right. not quite forty. Not quite an acre. Right. I was just so curious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um I don't know, I drove by, I I do think setting the pushing it back the way they're doing makes it look like it belongs there and it's not imposing on the entrance of the, or the facade of the house. Can we go back to the front photo? That. So it's going to be tucked back a little bit from that garage that's there. I don't think that it's going to look like it's intruding on. And it's not even visible from. Well, it will be when you drive up. I drove down the street and it's on the left. And so when you drive up, you'll see the addition. You will. Um, do you have something that I'm sure we do? Um, the shows the lot itself where the 
front setback. Can you show that map again, please? So again, this is the original submission, but you can see the front yard setback is here. Yeah, can you side yard setback is here, rear yard. Yeah, the house is yard. really on the setback. Like it's the way it's positioned, I think is yeah, just, a piece of this hardship that it's really positioned very close to that left side setback. It's not centered on the property. Yeah, because I was going to say, can you show the front line of how the street line is to the house again? If it were centered on the property, we wouldn't be here probably. So I think that's another consideration that they are dealing with a house that's not centered and the other side of it is not buildable because of the center. Was it positioned on the lot because of the wetlands off to the right, do you think? It was probably aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be. It was probably aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, thinking of in relation the way the, the road, road curves, curves yeah. and sometimes they measure right from the road back, and then they literally put it parallel with the road, and the road is curved. So there's all kind. I know that's how my house was positioned, oddly as it is, because of the curved road. So you can um, see Cedar Glen just along the bottom. Yeah, and it's we're, we're very tilted and it's really far to the left. So they have a lot of room on the right that they can't use. So I think that's a piece of this hardship. Yeah, that's well that's what I wanted to look at that again. Yeah. I'm glad you asked about that. Yeah, because I mean I've driven by it, but yeah, because if you sometimes look, I you see it, yeah, you have to you can't it. figure out where property lines it's and true, and it's are nice on the big screen until it's mow season. So if you <laughs> look at that red square that is their right where they're allowed to have their house, the builder chose to put this house, the corner of it, almost on the setback, which is limiting. And there may have been a reason for it, but it's still what they're living with, what they're dealing with. Right. I think we should consider that. They can't use the right side of their property at all. And there's a lot of room over there that's not well, yeah, up for grabs. Well, you're, you're always affected by the slopes and the, the, the slopes and the and setback and, well, and, and you know whatever, whatever else is over there. Yeah. So I think that's where is the um, well on this property? Is it a well or is it town? Or is it? Oh, oh, you can't speak. Oh, is it right a well here. or is it town? Existing well. Existing well, okay. So it's. Okay. Okay, so it's far enough. I was thinking maybe that would give me something. Okay. So. Well, that's the well and that's the septic. I think that has to do with the water. Is that water or is that conservation? Good question. The turquoise line, is that. Yeah, the, yeah, the squiggly. Okay, I want to look at, it. can you put the picture of the front of the house again? Does it show, I'm just looking at how the driveway goes. There, we don't have anything that shows how the, you can see it there on that. When I see it marked on here, I was hoping yeah. I could see it in a picture. Really? So it's, it's a little hard to make out, but you can see the driveway here. And then it extends up to the, oh, to the road. Okay. Okay, right. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's like when I and when I drove by, you know, I'm like, okay, let's see, where is it? Figure it out. He's going to give us a aerial view of your house. So helpful. It's not too fuzzy. Okay. Oh, there you go. There we go. Thank you. I love it when you ask and you can have what you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Miracle of technology. Yeah, that makes me feel better. 
I think we've got to consider the placement of this house on the property. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I do too. Because they they've been given this not centered home, and now they have to make it work as best they can. So. Right, because I'm trying to when you're looking at hardship. So you're trying to say, okay, yes. what is making this one it's that more unusual than what is in their neighborhood? Because it too, whether or not the other ones are close to the property line like that, I don't know. But this one certainly is, and it is mm -hmm. causing a situation where they can't necessarily use the property. It's you know relates to the condition of the land or the well the right. slope oh, is right. the condition of the land. Um, but the applicant, it, it doesn't have anything to do with anything the applicant's done. And this is the right, the way it was created. So it could be, I mean, I, it, it's very likely peculiar to this structure that it's that close to the setback. It's the same with the backyard setback. They have a really sizable front yard that was that they can't really take advantage of. The house is really tucked into that corner of the setback, especially on the side. that bird's eye view the street view well the oh yeah the on the yeah the street view bird's eye and then the street view yeah can you take that view and go over to the left the next property like i just want to see how that property line the answer is can will he <laughs> yeah he will he will because he's the yeah. best on this so this isn't GIS. I can log into GIS. You can actually see the Thank you. the rough property lines. Wow. Yeah. 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 the builder was placing the houses aesthetic, you know, for whatever his or her aesthetic reasons were and it ended up being really close to that. It could have even was, had something to do with digging the foundation. It could have, it could have been something to do with the topography or what they were yeah. So the house you're concerned about is so Yeah, I just want, yeah, I just, yeah. But, um, it makes me, you know, makes me feel better because that person has a lot of they hair have, and then in the back yeah. there's nothing really visual from the back either they are set it looks like their house is probably also not centered 
and they have a lot of it almost looks, well I mean the line might not be right it almost looks like there might be an easement for the edge of their driveway on the next property Possibly. either that or it's just offline right okay it's, I've seen enough on that okay thank you for that mm -hmm. So considering the placement of the home in relation to the setback, considering the septic tank and the backyard slope and the fact that they did ask, they did as we asked and reduced some sizes, took out that door, which I know was a convenience that they are not gonna have now. Um, I'm very appreciative of all of that. The rear yard setback backs up to nobody and it is very small. The side yard setback is. And it's still a substantial <clears throat> percentage of the side yard, but since the roof does curve mm -hmm. beyond there <clears throat> and the next property is also skewed, right? And also over to the left of their thing. Mm -hmm. It, it's um yeah I think it's gonna be a, a not issue for the neighbors exactly frankly yeah you know, I don't think they're even gonna notice it which is probably maybe why they never res did respond to any opportunity to respond to it um, I think we have we definitely have some special conditions to do with the land and the way that the home is placed, which is peculiar to this particular piece of land. Um, the applicant certainly hasn't had anything to do with it because they didn't you know, put this house in that position. Um, so they had no uh, way of preventing this. I would be inclined to I certainly have a clearer understanding of it than I did an hour ago, so it was all yeah. a good discussion. Um, would someone like to make a motion to approve this application? Fine. Read that. Yeah. Oh. Read that. Moved. The Zoning Board of Appeals approves, ap approves application ZBA 24 02 of Curtis Lillian Manu Singh Lumi applicant owner for a variance section 3.9 of the Sensory Zoning Regulations to construct an attached accessory dwelling unit within established property setbacks by reducing the side yard setback from plus or minus 40 feet to plus or minus 32.3 feet and to reduce the rear setback rear yard setback from plus or minus 50 feet to plus or minus 47.5 feet at 10 Cedar Glen Assessors Map E10 Block 147 Lot 207 Sensory Connecticut 06070 Zone R40 as the applicant has met all the criteria for criteria pursuant to section 16.c based on the following findings. Now you have to list the hardship issues. Slope. Slope. Backyard slope. Backyard slope. Septic. Septic. Placement of the house. Placement of the house. Second? I second it. All in favor of approving application 2402 say aye. 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 
All opposed? It passes. Thank you. I appreciate all your efforts on this. You're welcome. So there's 10 acres behind us that's empty. Um, that's the, um, I use one out here too. Uh, that's and, okay. Um, <clears throat> the uh, well is up by the street. Right. That's where that is. Um, what's another question we had? Um, I talked to my neighbor. The neighbors. The neighbor has approved. Um, yeah, they would have come forward and said. Yeah, something. so I talked to my show. And that's, that's we don't really can't use that, but it's just good information. Yeah. yeah. So we appreciate all of your. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for the questions. Yeah, makes you have to think about it. It's important. All right, our next order of business. General oh wait, is this one? General Commission business bylaw discussion. Did everyone have a chance to look through all the changes? Did anyone have any more? Um, I think there were just a couple typos that I found. Go ahead. Um Okay, so on the, the order of business at hearings, business is one S. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Um, where it says order of business at hearings, section B or five or no, whatever. Section B, order of business at hearings. Order of business spelled wrong. I believe. Yes, it is. Order of business B U S I N. There's two S's in there right now. You are yeah. correct. My eyes corrected that one. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get in. There was another one. I can circle that. Um, okay. Yeah, another so under where you have um, officers and duties on page three thank you for a good team here um, where you have the chairman shell so you're just missing periods at the end of B preside over all meetings it's right here pardon there's a period right you there. have it there okay yep. it doesn't on the Yeah, you had fixed that. This on the red line version is fixed. Okay, good. Okay. And I thought that on the red line version there was just one other typo, but I'm not seeing it this minute. You saw the business order. Mm -hmm. business. Yep, I noted that one. One still say seven thirty. No, and this one it's seven. Change. Oh yeah, it's changed to seven. Okay. You can um, approve it with the conditions or the corrections that were noted during this meeting uh, and then just make a motion and then they'll be effective okay so I would like to make a motion that we approve the revised Commission bylaws with under con with the changes that we noted tonight to be made there's a second all 
Wednesday, no, it's sitting. For Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.